you probably didn't know that right now our most profitable product is actually branding irons. If you follow me on YouTube, you probably didn't even know that these branding irons existed. And even if you pay attention to our Instagram, you probably don't see them very much. The branding irons are so profitable for us because we have the systems to make them really dialed in. In terms of human time, selling them is by far the most laborious part, followed by getting the artwork into a form where I can put it in CAD. The actual CAD and CAM is really quick and easy because we have great fusion templates that take almost all of the work out of it. Starting this weekend, we are adding additional sizes of branding irons to our lineup. Our customers have been asking ever since day one for bigger irons. I just finished up the work holding that would allow us to do the bigger irons on the Pocket NC. Now I need to build the CAM templates and workflow that will allow us to make these bigger irons profitable. I'm going to record a video at some point here in the near future showing you the fixture for the Pocket NC, so look for that coming in a week or two. In the meantime, let's get into Fusion and start doing our modeling. This is not going to be an instructional video, but I will show you exactly how I do these templates and hopefully you can figure out how to apply that to your own work. All right, this is my 3D model of the fixture. I have everything modeled up just like it is in reality. The piece of stock fits in here and then up here, this is like the movable portion of the jaw in a vise. That's how I think about it. Uh, these holes are for dowel pins that this top jaw slides on and then a quarter 20 screw goes through this hole and allows you to tighten the whole thing down, clamping your stock here. So our stock will be located and constrained by this surface here, that surface, and then this surface. So let's start by making a new component that's gonna hold our stock. So I'm gonna call this one two inch stock. Let's start by setting up parameters. We want model par or user parameters, there we go. Stock width. See, this is the one that's going to be variable. Two inches is gonna be the most common. And let's favorite that, because that's gonna be the one that's gonna change. And then we can do stock depth. This is probably gonna stay standardized most of the time at half an inch. And then we want stock height. And again, this is gonna be standardized most of the time because our jaw is designed to hold a two inch piece of stock. Okay, so those are set. We can okay out of there and start a sketch. I'm going to place this sketch on uh, this plane right here. I like to, as much as possible, do center rectangles around the origin. Let's see, this is going to be stock width, stock height. I'm going to extrude this out by stock depth. Let's go ahead and make this look brass so we can tell it apart. Brass polisher. Now we can finish with that component and get it put in place. So now I'm gonna move my stock and get it made it up to my fixture. And I'm gonna do these with uh, planar constraints. I'm doing this with planar constraints because if I change the position of my end stop here, let's say I need a bigger, or a wider end stop to do a bigger piece of material in the future, I want to be able to adjust this stock parametrically. Now the material is located in place, just like it'll be located when I actually do the cutting. The exact positioning on this really isn't critical because let's see, this edge here and this edge here will be saw cut and really all the other edges at this point are just going to be extruded. The only machining we are gonna do is on the front face and then we're gonna flip it and do the back face. Really alignment doesn't matter on these parts. Even if the handle on the back is out 20 thou, nobody will notice. There's no reason to, to worry about a more precise fixture for this. As long as I take my calipers and measure the width of this stock before I start my CAD, then we should be fine. We'll be more than close enough to get it visually centered. The last thing I'm gonna do here, I'm going to make this stock uh, transparent. So I want it very clear or very obscure, however you want to think about it. Next up, we need the actual branding iron itself. And to start with that, I'm going to do a uh, new component. Always start with a new component. This is going to be two inch branding iron. And again, I'm going to do a sketch 
put it on that plane there. Again, I like to do center rectangles about the origin. Again, using our parametricness, we are going to do some more parameters. See, then let's add a parameter for engraving depth. Let's make that 30 thou. For some materials, I need to go as high as an eighth of an inch to get clean brands, uh, specifically for soft leathers. They need a very tall brand, but for wood, a smaller engraving depth is actually better. So 30 thou is the one that I use, and that works really well most of the time. Now we can do the thickness or the depth of the branding iron. Iron depth, and this will be the stock depth minus engraving depth minus uh, some clearance because we have to get rid of that mill finish. I may need to do some experimenting, but I think 020 will be safe, 20 thou. And that will calculate the actual thickness of the iron itself, which works out to be, looks like 0.45 inches with these settings. I'm gonna go ahead and favorite engraving depth because that does change sometimes and hit okay. All right, now we can put dimensions on our rectangle here. So this is iron width, iron height. We can extrude this by iron depth. And there's the start of our branding iron. Now let's go ahead and start by adding the engraving. So let's see, let's go down here to sketches. And just for fun, I'm going to name this one base dimensions. Now we'll do a new sketch here and name this one engraving. Okay. So that'll make it easier to find and change later. You need to have some sort of engraving on the template so that you can reference it in cam when you're making your template. I'm going to go ahead and just do some text here. That will be our sample text. And then we need to do a containment sketch around this that we will use later in cam. So this will serve to both provide the, the border, the margin of the artwork towards the edge of the iron and also give us a thing we can click on in cam so that it tries to cut the right geometry. And then actually, let's give this more tolerance on the saw cut edges. The tolerance from my supplier is an eighth inch. So if we do 0.125 divided by two, as our margin on both of these, we lose quite a bit of square footage here, square inchage. We lose a lot of space, but we know that even if we're at the top or the bottom of our tolerances, all of the artwork will still be on the iron. So now we can go ahead and extrude this out and we can extrude that by engraving depth. Now I can put a hole in the back and this needs to be sized for a, a 5 16th 24. I have no idea what that is. We want internal 5 16th 24. So between 267 and 277. So we're just gonna take the average of that so we're in the middle of our tolerance range. So I'm gonna make this whole iron depth minus 0.125. Now, in order to make this a little bit more user friendly, I'm gonna add some marks on the back of this that'll act as an indicator to the user of a couple different things. So the first thing I'm going to do is add an arrow pointing up. This arrow will tell the user which direction is the top of their iron so they don't need to check every time. I plan on doing the whole back of the irons with just one tool, an eighth inch end mill. So let's make each of these an eighth inch and we'll just slot them. They won't be very deep. So there's our big fat arrow. That should be nice and easy to see. So now we can cut this in. Uh, let's see, 10 thou was probably, or 20 thou is probably enough because that's how much we're taking off on the other side. There's our arrow. And we can name that arrow. And then also sometimes the brand is smaller than the branding. Well, always the brand is smaller than the branding iron. Sometimes it's like a lot smaller though, and it can be kind of difficult to guess where the actual mark is in relation to the edge of the branding iron. So I'm gonna build these little uh, guides in 
so that when you're looking at it from behind with holding the handle, you can kind of get a better idea of where the actual mark on your piece of work is gonna be. And again, I'll be doing all these with the eighth inch end mill, just slot in them. And I'll just copy paste the one I have four different times. I would normally do this with a pattern, but you want these to stay uh, not necessarily constrained to each other in case your engraving isn't uh, square. You could have a rectangular engraving in either aspect ratio. So you wanna be able to adjust these to fit. There we go. And I'll lock all of these together with some geometric constraints. So they stay as the sides of a rectangle. And now we can extrude these down and I will just have these match the arrow. Rename our sketch. There we go. I think that'll provide a much better user experience for uh, whoever happens to buy our brands. So I think we've actually finished designing the iron. So let's put it in our fixture. So now we can make our component in and we'll just do it right into the stock instead of to the fixture. So I'm just gonna join on the center of the back plane to the center of the back of the stock. And I want that to be a ridge joint. All right, so if I hit okay, we should see that our engraving is below the surface of the stock there, but our actual iron is lined up with the edges of the stock. Because again, we're not removing material off the sides of this. I'll uh, do some hand finishing on it and sandblast it to make the, the fit and finish look nice. But I would rather not do that with my pocket NC, which is slow at removing material. This video is starting to get long. Let's go ahead and break it up into a two-parter. I did the cat on this one. I'll do the cam on the next video. Maybe I'll even throw in a part three and we can machine our first branding iron together. If you are interested in buying something we make, like a branding iron or a arch top, we have a link down in the description. Uh, and then do all the YouTube things like subscribe, comment, whatever. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.